Well, check this out. It's a giant OCR3. These are early-ish 2000 model bikes and full aluminum frame, carbon fork. It has four componentry, nine speed in the back, I believe a triple. It does have an adjustable stem on it and a little more comfortable geometry lax position. So this is where the bike lines are splitting into more endurance type recreational comfort bikes. These were awesome. I mean, they were not priced very expensive, got people into riding. This particular person brought this in to have it tuned up and they don't do a lot of riding. Their significant other does a lot more riding, but it's your two to three, four times a year bike, and it needs definitely a lot of love. The chain is stretched, which when I did a review uh, with checking in, dead check it. It is need to be replaced. The tires are going to be replaced as well. Uh, there's some surface rust I'm going to try to remove, but other than that, it's basically in for your standard tune, which for most shops is adjusting derailers, brakes, sometimes adjusting the hubs and trimming wheels, which I do. And I'm gonna do a little extra, extra, do some sauna cleaning for the drivetrain, the derailers, make sure they're as clean as possible because who doesn't want to, who wants to work on a dirty bike? So without further ado, let's just dive into this bad boy. Welcome to I Know A Guy Bicycles. Hanging out with a guy. Hi, I'm Justin the Guy. Obviously I have a garage shop. Take scary how to use one bike at a time. If you want to be kept up to date on the latest projects and topics, please like and subscribe. So this might be a bike that you're interested in getting yourself used or you have one and needs to be kind of brought up to speed. Yeah, tune-ups are really pretty good. I mean, most bike shops will say annual tune-up once a year. Well, if it's tuned up really good, like an overhaul, you probably just need some light adjustments on the following year and maybe the second, depending how much you ride, of course, how many miles it's seen and so forth. So if you're an avid rider and riding a lot, yeah, it might be once a year you need a really good strip down and rebuild back up, tune up. In this case, it's, 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 it, it is at its point. I mean, it's seen some elements um, when it brought in or some snow on it. Yeah, this is winter time. Um, need to be definitely cleaned up. It has a good amount of dirt on the paint and so forth. I would like to give this thing a little extra TLC. It's a good customer of mine. They brought in several bikes for me to work on. And it's one of those things is if you're not gonna do it right, I'm not gonna do it at all. So even with my standard tunes, and this is kind of where you wanna bet in your neighborhood is a type of bike shop that's like, well, our standard tune is our basic. We might do a little extra or we will do a little extra in hopes to retain that customer, not necessarily advertise it. We're not gonna do a drivetrain clean and advertise it for that lower price on everything. But if it warrants it, you know, if they're a good little shop, they're gonna pull those parts real quick, throw them in also sauna cleaner or the solvent tank, whatever they use to have it clean up and go back. And they're like, yeah, we kind of elevated the tune up for you. And you know, we're not gonna charge you this time around. Please come back, you know, it's one of those things. So we work very hard and diligently to try to get these things to be as safe as possible out of the gate. You go to a bigger chain store, sometimes they're just really stuck on those policies and they don't have the wiggle room to do those little extras when need be. Or like one part is a lot easier to work on, so we'll put more emphasis on parts that really need more address. That's the kind of perspective you want. Um, I mean, the true, the wheels might be true. I may not need to work on those very long, so that's quick and quick and easy, and I go into the next parts. But with this particular one, I did ch uh, check the chain. It is stretched. Uh, that adds another question. It was like, well, is the rest of the componentry, meaning the cassette and chain rings, are those compromised? Well, sometimes they are, depending what kind of riding you've been doing. And if you're, I call them grinders, if you just get in those one or two gears and grind, that's all you do, you're gonna wear out those chain uh, cassettes and chain rings a little bit faster because you're not distributing that load amongst the whole drivetrain. If you're a spinner, like I am, I like high revolutions. So in other words, I'm constantly shifting and changing gears. That distributes that pressure. So the length of the cassette and the chain rings are gonna last a lot longer. You are, gonna, you are what you are, right? It's one of those situations where you can't just change your style of riding. I'm not telling you to do that, but you need to expect that if you're that kind of a grinder rider, you're gonna wear out those parts in, in a different fashion than those who don't. That being said, 
putting on a new chain, I'm not going to know until I'm actually test riding it and putting it into the great load. Let's see if that chain's going to pop on the chain rings or the cassette. I have a good feeling in this situation, you're not going to have that problem. Usually what happens is you can do two chains to one cassette on rule of thumb, but not necessarily means that's the case on all bikes. Componentry level, um, some componentry lasts a little longer. Higher in componentry, they shift a lot smoother for, a, for that duration of time, but they have a short window of life, just like high-end sports car tires, that kind of thing. So you want to keep that in mind when you're looking at componentry and so forth. And looking at this particular bike, it's a nice aluminum frame with a carbon fork. And I'm definitely going to try to clean up a little bit of surface rust on this and try to get it to be the best experience possible for the rider and safe, of course. And I'm going to do a little extra polishing and put some ceramic coating on the frame because that's just kind of how I am. I want to make this frame to pop. And since they've given us several bikes to work on, that's something I'm going to really dive into. So if you are looking at that situation and you're trying to vet that particular um, I, I doubt they'll find very much detailing in your neck of the woods. That might be something you want to do yourself. So um, I will probably provide a how to do it yourself, clear coat ceramic wash. Once I land on the actual frame washing materials that I want to use. Um, right now I'm using more aggressive purple power, which I don't suggest for everybody to use. Definitely dilute it if you do. Um, you can use actually uh, Windex or that kind of thing, something a little less uh, abrasive to get all that gunk off. And when you do wash your bike, definitely use uh, water pressure that's low. Don't high pressure and try to keep it below the seat post and the head tube. You don't want any of that water to get inside the frame and drain to the bottom and start corroding. Even though it's aluminum frame, you have aluminum frame that does have metal parts that connect to it. You don't want to compromise those connections with rust. Believe me, it's not a good thing. And sometimes you'll get corrosion between two alloy parts, and that's still not a good thing as well. So that being said, we're going to dive into this thing and see if we find anything else that might be scary or not scary, or it's just dirty. It just needs to be fixed and cleaned up. The chain that we put on today is the PC850 from Ceram. You're basically with the power link. Um, also, I got some Victoria tires I'm going to put on there. These are inexpensive Victorias. Like this, like they said, this is an individual that doesn't ride a lot. It's like two or three times a year. They didn't want to forego and go for the fifty or hundred dollar tires, which you may yourself want to get into. Um, this is an opportunity to do that. Some shops, some shops have really big a stigma against you bringing in your own parts, um, and shopping and that kind of thing. Still might be that today, but um, for myself, I am basically independent and. I'm not here to sell people tires and chains. I'm here to do the service work, and that's my value prop. If you bring in chain, cables, whatever, um, this individual brought in a whole bunch of stuff to work on their bikes, that's fine with me. Um, it's one of those situations where I'm not going to front load my garage with a whole bunch of parts and accessories that I think I'm going to sell. That is not my direction, and if you can find a shop that has or a guy like me in the garage working near you doing a similar thing. Also, mobile shops are similar to that perspective as well. And it's like, hey, and if they really give you kind of an attitude about that, it's like, well, you got to be understanding. They may give you an attitude a lot of different other directions too. So keep in mind about that gold nugget. In any case, let's dive in. So what I like to do with all my bikes, you know, obviously I'm going to take the wheels off, use the quick release. Um, pop the brakes open. I notice there's surface rust here, surface rust on the brakes. I'm going to try to maybe brush those off if I can. <sighs> Earthquake. I'm going to try to brush those off when I can um, from without uh, dissembling everything, but I'll give it a good cleaning, that kind of thing. And you can see there's like this kind of a layer of good, good dirt on here that I'm going to make sure I get off and once it's all cleaned off, and we'll put on some um, good surface. And this is opportunity to check the hubs, make sure they're good. And you can kind of see it has like a lot of dirt. So this is good, good bath time. Bath time, bay spa, ooh, bike spa. Ooh, let's dive into the back part. Oh, we got ourselves a mouse. Yeah, we're gonna kill that mouse, or at least make it go away. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, sometimes these have a power link. I think this is age of a bike, may not, and more maybe a Z chain, what it looks like. Those particular ones, you can just drive the pin through. 
You, if you're really good at it, you don't drive through all the way, just as a second plate on the inside. That way you can re-push the pin in. Um, that was just a technique back then in the lower end chains. I'm not really worried about this one because I am replacing it. So basically just uh, get it to pop off. Ooh. It doesn't want to give up. There you go. Woo. There I can just pull the chain through. I will be saving that chain just in case. And on this particular one, I do feel like I really want to get this cleaned up. So, and I got a lot of caked on uh, derailleur gunk. Like this paste that builds up. It's like a tough on paste from a lot of lube. So I'm gonna do the, take this off, cassette off as well. Yeah, the front derailleur. And yeah, I'm gonna take the crank. Get There's no way you can really get in here really clean until you, Take it apart and put an ultrasonic cleaner, a clean tanker, or a sink to wash it off. Now take the brakes, do the same thing, open up the brake caliper, and do the quick release. There's no wire tabs on the back, so it should just drop out like so. Then we just take this bad boy off. So to get a drill it off, I'm going to take off this uh, cable end. If you crimp it the other direction, it'll open it up, so you won't, most of the time, won't fray the cable so you can re-thread it through the derailleur sometimes. Um, other than that, you'll just have to trim it back and get closer on there. Yeah, like so. So you don't have any fraying there so you can push it through. This one actually takes a, a nut bolt versus an Allen. So just unscrew that out and that cable should, oh, you can see the corrosion kind of thing. I might see if it replace that we'll see but this has seen some elements so we definitely want to give it a good good honest cleaning then we just take this off like that this will open this area up for me also to clean around the frame and inspect as well And on this guy, we don't need to deal with the cable because it'll just slide right out, so I don't need to mess with the cable end. Just need to open up so it releases. And this guy is a brazon mount, so I should be able to just get into this part here. And it opens up. Ooh. Crank wants to play a game with me. Up and down, up and down. So I'm going to definitely clean all this good goodiness up and get all that back gunk out of the way. This is a true Veda crank, which these, you know, you found them on a lot of bikes. Um, and they were kind of a mixed match with Shimano componentry. They were just a cheaper version. And they seemed to, they worked well. I mean, I've then also Bontrager had their stamp on there, which, I think it was a true Veda. Also, FSA is another one. You can see all that surface cleaning you need to do on that guy as well. And to pop that crank, I got to look at it. It's a square taper in inside, so I use a this crank puller with a narrower part, which is a CCP-22 from Parks. What this does threads into the crank. You want to make sure it's in all the way. This is hardened steel versus an alloy crank arm, so you don't want to pull it. It'll cause it to uh, crush those threads. So you want to make sure it's secure all the way. Also, you can use a crank. I feel like this has gone in enough. Then, when you push, spin this around, this is going to apply pressure to the inside spindle and uh, push that crank out from the cold forge weld of contact of four sides, like so. Boop. Voila. And this particular pedal, I don't want to throw it into ultrasonic, so I will definitely be taking this guy off uh, because I don't want to expose those bearings to any kind of cleaning agent.
So here we set the temperature or preheated tank, just flushed it out with fresh uh, water with one to seven ratio of simple green. Do a five minute installment there, sections each time with these troublesome little dirty parts. I usually do a little pre-treating with carb cleaner or brake cleaner. Also you can use, um, if that's too harsh for you, White Lightning has a spray called Clean Streak, which works really well in the cycling industry. I just use these because it's just a little more economically friendly for me to uh, do a higher volume. So here we go into the tank. Bloop. And do five minutes. So after a five minute cycle, obviously you can see my water is, or solution has definitely changed colors with the heating element. See how it just kind of took all that surface stuff off. And you want to be careful though. You don't want to cook it too many times because five minute increments, that's when I check it. And to get some of those deeper little areas, I use a brush to kind of cut into those caked up areas. To clean that looking at the cassette still a little bit of dirty in here so I want to probably do that another time skewers only usually do once because they usually clean up pretty well the front derailleur uh, looks pretty clean to me and the rest of this can just be wipe off once rinsed you rinse these off in water too and I have a brush there to kind of scrub those which really comes back to life and up oh, still have some caked on gunk here so we want to remove all that and probably do another cycle of uh, cleaning that and you can use a uh, screwdriver to kind of peel off that nasty layer of cake and probably i believe it's probably just going to need two cycles on this <laughs> got a piece of grass or something in there so front derailleur is good skewers are good kind of give this maybe another little slight coating and for the derailleur get all those inside bits and especially this cassette give it another little Spray. And I believe five minutes will definitely finish this off proper. All right, let's see what we have here. Look at that. Pretty darn clean. Rinse it off with some hot water. And looking at this derailleur here, you can see all that gunk is now gone. So it'll definitely work at its best efficiency considering. So on to rinsing and onto the frame. So multitasking is a very key element in bicycle mechanics, right? You want to go through all these steps and I've been doing this for years. So I have like my basically muscle memory of doing this over and over and over. Well, the ultrasonic cleaner has definitely been a game changer because as you can hear, it's cleaning instead of me scrubbing those parts like the old school solvent tank I can go do something else. I've already rinsed my wheels off in the shop sink there and gave it a good scrubbing with water and just basically Dawn dish soap kind of thing. I think it's Ajax is the brand I use. It doesn't really matter as long as it's a light soap. I can use a brush to scrub in the little areas of the spokes and so forth to do a pre-cleaning before I put it on the truing stand and do the truing and also a cleaning inspecting again on that. But as my parts are usually cleaning, I take half and a half purple power and water, dilute it. You don't want to use straight busy. You, uh, it'll take off surfaces of certain things. So, and having the frame partially stripped down, this way I can kind of get that dirt off 
as I can get all these little sections where you typically can't if your wheels and brakes are on there. Therefore, I can get a lot of this cleaning done. I don't spray directly onto the frame, especially if I still have componentry on there. I only spray directly onto the frame when I have the frame completely stripped, like doing an overhaul. But in this case, it still has some parts on it, so I still don't spray directly on there. So I'll just keep cleaning and I'll do a little polishing and then probably add a little bit of special something something at the end here. While cleaning, inspecting, and wiping, really, you know, I do a lot of, and, you know, when I, cleaning is just the great way of inspecting your frame. Highly recommended to do it yourself. That way you can kind of be in tune with your bike, make sure all the little areas are clean and dirty, oh, man. And, and making sure there's no cracks or what have you. But I did find something. You can see there's a little gap here. To me, this is supposed to be flush. It's supposed to be all the way in there. So to what I understand is this is backed off a little bit or got pushed in or was not put in there correctly. So I'm gonna pop this crank off on this side here and then back off the cup of the bottom bracket cartridge and see if this goes further in or remove it, clean it and put it back together. We'll see what I need to do when I start tearing into this. But this is one of those situations where, yeah, um, you may not catch on a, just a regular standard tune because all your parts is still on there. I probably would not have seen this otherwise, but since I do take some parts off and do a little bit thorough inspection with my standard tunes, uh, this is where we find. And what this will do, if this is adjusted back, I'll push that crank in a little bit closer and then that limit ad adjustment on the front derailleur, that definitely needs to be looked into because now that crank is closer in so that adjustment range is gonna need to be addressed. But I do that anyway, but that's just one of those cause and effect situations. So let's pop into this and see what we have. So here we have it is I replace I taken out that adjuster cup or compression cup on the other side. This is finger loose. I, I can unscrew this with my bare hands. That's not good. It's supposed to be tight in there. So it, it, obviously it backed off at some point. So I'll pull this out real quick, wipe it down, clean the threads, put some grease, probably ultrasonic the other crank and that uh, adjuster cup, not the bottom bracket cartridge though. Um, this does still feel smooth. So it's still, um, in good order form, but probably what happened is this was the original owner of the bike was built put together at the factory and This wasn't compressed tight correctly and this is something you don't really check when you're building it from new um, Especially this is the kind of an entry-level road So they're just cranking and building them and putting them on the floor So this is something that happened occurred um, if it's been tuned up after that and they did a thorough tune 
on this and missed this or it happened after that, that may be the case. But it looks like it's OEM bottom bracket, so it doesn't look like it's been swapped out with a newer one. So we'll go ahead and clean this up and get it all reassembled for the customer. All right, we got the internal bottom bracket shell cleaned up. What you want to do is you take a little bit of grease, put it on the threads on the inside here. And that way it won't seize. Even though it's aluminum, you still can get some corrosion between the cups of the bottom bracket in there. So you want to make sure that's cleared up. And you always want to put on your drive side first or the full assembly but this wedges over to lock in the place and how these go on is basically you're pedaling backwards then one side is reverse thread or actually pedaling forward sorry no, no, backwards pedaling backwards so backwards is tightened direction and forwards is loosening direction so we want to get this in there all tight before we put the cup side in all the way and you'll see this gap yeah goes away completely so it didn't get stuck or anything it backed off then from here yeah, make sure it's on there tight then once that is your fixed side then you can take your cup and i like to put a little bit of grease on the inside of here as well kind of sometimes you'll get some creaking noise from the flux of the steel and aluminum combo. And this particular type of bonnet bracket, it has a bearing where it rolls on that. So you want it to be on all the way or engaged all the way. Get my park tool, bonnet bracket tool on there. And this where, since I have the other side is already fixed tight, I can really just Crank on this and make sure it's on there good, like so. So now we address the bottom bracket and now it's in there correctly. It feels nice and smooth. I'm not gonna put the crank, on, crank set on yet because I want to have the exposed frame to do the finishing cleaning. I'm gonna use a lithium all surface cleaner. After I got all the gunk off, I'm gonna be using this side, this guy right here, the all surface from lithium to kind of bring out any other contaminants that's on the frame. And after that, I'm going to put some ceramic slam on there, um, probably a coat or two, just to give it extra water propellant uh, protection, and also UV protection. So using this and onto this, let's dive into it. I'll demonstrate on a fairly clean rag here with the uh, hyper clean. And if you notice, I did unhook the brakes. The brakes calipers themselves had some rust, so I decided to take a wire brush to kind of clean those up. And also those get me, get those out of the way so I can actually get to those surface areas. And then I just kind of go through each tube of the frame with the all purpose surface cleaner to get any of that extra dirt I may have missed with initial cleaning with purple power and any maybe little gunk or boo-boo scuffs to be removed as also underneath the frame is very important because that's where all the hidden scaries are because if you clean that and you might find there's extra gunk from road debris also i found cracked frames dinged frames from the bottom part so you might, might make sure you double check that if you just bought a used bike and need to redo something there you go and we'll just keep cleaning this off.
Okay, now, so when you have the frame, it has to be clean. It, there's no, no bones about it. You need to clean the surface, just like your car detailing. You wanna make sure you have a very clean surface before you apply any ceramic or wax coatings onto that paint, because you don't want to trap that dirt on there as much as possible. Yeah, nobody's perfect, but on a bike frame, there's all these little nicks and crannies. You notice it's like you got a floss, repeat floss. This process actually enables me to double check the frame several times before actually applying the last coat. Well, in addition to the frame on a, or on, the, on a car, you're looking at somewhere it's a little bit easier to see those surfaces and so forth on those bigger areas. But on a bike, it's a little, little tighter, compact areas. I like to double check underneath, make sure I get all those little scuffs and little dirt patches gone, and then apply with an applicator here um, that you can get from Walmart. Uh, I just like these ones that are, are pliable so I can get into the corners a lot easier um, in that case. So I don't use a lot of this. I just put a little bit on the applicator and basically a big bottle of this will last 16 ounces will last uh, I think eight cars worth of application. Um, I've gone through about a half a bottle of this and I've done about 12 to 13 bikes already um, and I've been doing double layer and stacking like do it once let it dry let it cure then do it again just to build up that stacking for better protection. So without further ado this is how you do it. Just apply it on and what I like to do is go through each tubing twice that way I can enable or ensure that I got it all um, or at least a better chance so by doing that I do one side you got the chain stays Here we have it, true and clean wheels. Just need to install the new tires. Now those drailers cleaned up really nicely. So do the crank and the cassette. I'll be adding a new chain to this, so that doesn't need to be addressed. But wow, look at that frame. Actually came out really nice. And yeah, let's uh, review, right? Whole bunch of different little steps to a simple tune-up or a basic tune-up kind of elevated. They had a couple bikes that I've been working on. So put a little extra TLC plus as a mechanic, I don't like to leave things not right. If not going to do it at all, if it's not right. So did a little extra cleaning on the drivetrain, which only takes me a few minutes to do just to kind of add to it. Came across that bottom bracket issue, got that addressed and fixed up. Uh, so they're good there. The wheels turned out very true and adjust the hub. So I kind of saved a little bit of time there. So it all kind of balances out, right? But in the end of the day though, I'm addressing the issues at hand in addition, double checking everything else. Cleaning, cleaning wise, the drailers should be pretty clean. Just need to put a little bit of light lube on them, which I use TriFlow for that, for all the pivots and so forth, and reassemble the cassette and put on the new chain. Before doing all that though, I did clean the frame, which most bike shops will do. Maybe they'll have some kind of a polish, uh, something light level, but I put, go the extra step and I did an actual surface clean, which pr you know, protects the paint, pulls all that, most of that dirt off as much as possible with the lithium, all surface cleaner. Then I treated it with two uh, stacks of ceramic slam. Uh, wait for like five or ten minutes between each application. I do it twice. Same thing if you're going to do it with vehicles. It'll leave kind of like a dull haze to it. But check this out. Once you take that haze and you take a fiber cloth, it just brings out that shine. The first wipe or two, you'll feel like a, a catch, kind of like you're pushing off the extra layer of film and then after that it's just like super slick super super slick so without further ado on this bike I'm gonna put the parts back on it and get it into fine-tune 
uh, as much as possible. So yeah, I put a lot of extra into it. And he knows that, you know, the bottom bracket was extra. I put a little bit of coating on the actual uh, ceramic coatings. You can actually put on a lot of trimming and metal parts as well. So I do, you know, I do put it on the brake levers and so forth. It adds a little extra UV protection. For me, in my perspective, yeah, I like making stuff pretty, but I also like to give it a protective layer. That ceramic coating will you know, definitely beat up that water and shed. Also, those dirty droplets and what have you, maybe even with road tar, it might be a little bit easier for that stuff to pop off, And uh, which I found with a couple tests, and I have a couple videos on that, just you know, trying the ceramic with mud and so forth. Check out those videos. Um, actually, it turned out really well. And this frame, you know, some parts of it are gonna look spectacular, like brand new. Um, and I scrub the rust off of these guys as much as I can, and then I apply lube to the pivots to give it more, more life. So, little technical tips and tricks on that when putting these things back together. But in any case, this particular frame, man, I love pretty blue. Blue is pretty. Um, but in any case. Well, going to dive in and put these parts back on, but um, yeah, this is going to be one awesome tune-up for this person to go ride. I know they're not going to ride it very often, but when they do, it's going to be at the highest level of performance, and hopefully they have a great experience and maybe encourage them to ride even more. In any case, thanks for hanging out with me in the garage. Uh, all the stuff that I've used in the shop, is links below, also descriptions on tune-ups and so forth for additional information for you in the description below. In addition to, if you like videos like this, smash those buttons, you know the drill. And thanks for hanging out with me in the garage. Until next time, but before you go, check out these awesome pictures of the final result. Beautiful. One of my good ones. Every time. Every time. Until next time from the garage, have a wonderful day.